Hi there. Today I wanted to chat with you about red light therapy and viruses that your horse may encounter, including West Nile virus and Eastern encephalitis. One of the things that we hold near and dear to our heart is utilizing red light therapy in very unconventional ways. And we have been using red light therapy since 2002 on our own animals, and we've been in business since 2009. And unfortunately, we have actually encountered uh, Eastern encephalitis and West Nile virus before vaccinations were available. And this is where we quickly learned how valuable of a tool red light therapy can be in these life-threatening critical situations. So before we get into the nuts and bolts on how to actually utilize red light therapy in a situation like this, I'd like to give you a little bit of a background and why exactly it works. So red light therapy, when you expose it to the tissue, it stimulates mitochondrial activity, which enhances cellular energy production and it promotes healing. This is crucial to the therapy's effectiveness and its ability to increase nitric oxide levels in the blood. Here's the key. We are increasing nitric level, nitric oxide levels in the blood. What this does, especially in virus situations, is it prevents the virus from replicating. And it also supports the immune system in identifying and eliminating viral infection, viral infections. So this is why red light therapy works so great in these conditions. Um, now I know that it's going to be one of those things. I hope you never have to encounter it because it's absolutely scary. Um, we've had to encounter it. And fortunately, our stories ended with a great outcome. Um, so I wanted to share with you this foundation, the scientific foundation on why red light therapy um, works in virus situations. And so um, it's a super cool tool. We use it in very unconventional ways because you, it works. GV20, located along the governing vessel of the horse, which is again the center of ex extraordinary vessel. So it's going to be located between the base of the ears and the center. Um, it's used for rectal and u uterine prolapses, anxiety, uh, brain disorders. It's also used to stimulate the immune system, which is what I use it for most of the case. And you're just going to simply come between the ears. On the head, right in the center, and that would be GV20. GV24, it's used for headache, di headaches, dizziness, um, issues with nasal discharge of the horse. It's located halfway between the two points we use, which were yin, tang, and GV20, uh, where it's pretty much at the top of the where you see the, the input of, or the inlet of the eye is above here into the center of center line of the horse, the GV20. I'm gonna do it this way. GV26, one of our really most important points is located on the midline of the horse, located between, above the lip, between the nostrils used quite often for when we have shock issues, um, facial paralysis, um, issues with intestinals, um, and also um, sometimes for calming, and quite often for calming. And I love using this with the red and also the green light as well. So turn on your light, go between the nostrils, you'll find this deep hole. Put it here, I like to hang onto a halter or something while we do it, because they tend to want to turn their head away. In just 10 to 30 seconds, GV26, which is governing vessel 26. 
Large intestine 20, used a lot for nasal discharge, sinus issues, and also heat strokes. So it's a very good one for that. I actually start using this also for a lot of colic issues as well, because of course with colic we have large intestine issues. So if you look at the nasal itself, or the nose itself, the top aspect of it, if you come to the center, you're gonna find a really deep crease here. So it's right in line with the top of the, of the nose and the center above the lip, and you put it on each side of the horse here. When we're looking at the carotid artery on a horse, we're referring to the area where the vein artery and nerve run up the side of the esophagus up to the neck itself. And I typically like to put it, you can either put it like a couple fingers below the jaw, or I bring it down to where it's just in front of the shoulder in this area. Um, I use this points a lot for any time we have any kind of viruses or itises going on in the body. So if we're having anything that's going on that's causing inflammation or any of your kind of uh, uh, born viruses that you'd have out there. So you simply just turn on the light, put it on the area for about five minutes and it cleanses the blood three times. And again, you can put it on top or you can come down and you can put it on the bottom. Both points are acceptable. Kidney 27, it's used to open and relax the chest. It's used also for asthma, cough, and other respiratory issues. To find kidney 27, you come down the center line of the throat until you feel a bone. That bone is called a manubrium. You're gonna come out at a 45 until you've hit the most uh, dorsal aspect of the descending pectorals. You're gonna see that there's little holes right here on both sides. What I do sometimes is I just put my middle my index finger on the manubrium and my other two fingers outside and they fall right into those holes and that would be kidney 27. Large, large intestine 11 used a lot for fever issues, infl inflamed itchy skin, diarrhea, heat cycles, and forelimb issues. It's located on the front leg in front of or cranial to the proximal tuberosity. One of the easiest ways I find is I pick up the leg and you'll notice this deep hole in the center of the leg and the crease of the, of the shoulder. When I put the leg back down, that comes forward and that is the location for large intestine 11. Lung nine used for coughs heaves, asthma, carpal issues, and joint pain. It's located on the medial aspect of the, of the carpal bone. So if you go to the center of the knee and the medial and come to the back of the accessory carpal, you'll find lung nine. Large intestine four. It's used a lot for, again, another colic point, but it's also used for teeth and fever issues, any kind of anhydrosis, tendonitis, neck and shoulder issues, and back pain. It's a really good common point that we use a lot, and it's located in the medial aspect of the leg. So large intestine comes up the frontier and goes up the medial, very medial part, about one third down. So when you put the light on it, you, you find the, the bottom of the bone, come down about one third of the way, you'll feel a blood vein there, and that's where you put large intestine four. This is another one that can be quite reactive to, so I a lot of times put my hand above and below to capture the leg, just to keep the leg from, because they might paw or kick a little bit with the leg, so this keeps you from being unsafe. But otherwise, if they're good, we just do large intestine four. Lung 11, used a lot for asthma, allergies, cough, and nasal discharges. Also, I use it for stimulating the caudal part of the foot. It's the caudal most aspect of the ting point in the deep hole of the bulbs between the bulbs itself. Um, you can simply just put the point light on the point itself. Uh, if you're gonna be using it for stimulating the back of a foot, I put the Progen 2 on high 
And then I would put it in the back of the foot to do that. Bladder 13, also known as an association point for the lung meridian. It's a very important point because it really affects all your lung issues like coughing, heaves, bronchitis, uh, respiratory issues. And the other thing is it does a really good job on the forelimb area. It's located in the eighth intercostal space in line with the shelf of the ribs. So I basically start at the shelf of the ribs. You can feel the ribs here slide forward. It falls into a deep hole right behind the scapula. That's bladder 13, your lung association point. Bladder 17, used a lot for heaves, fatigue, heat stroke, stomach conditions. If you look down the bladder line, which comes over the top of the scapula and along the top of the ribs, if you, one way to do is start at bladder 13, which is eight and go eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So it's in the 12th intercostal space. You'll find bladder or bladder 17. Bladder 25, it is the large intestine association points used quite often for uh, low back pain, intestinal issues, and abdominal or diarrhea issues. Bladder 25 location, you find the uppermost point of the hip or the coxa tuberosity. I like to use the flat of my hand. I'll find this point. If I go to the center line, the horse that matches up with that, come towards me about a hand's width or just go to the center between those two, you find bladder 25. All right, Bakwe, also known as Baha, it is on the governing vessel and it is the master point or the meeting point of 100 meridians. It's one we use quite often with connections of other um, meridians. It's also used for hind limb disorder, heat stroke, stroke, gastrointestinal issues, and also reproductive dis, uh, issues. Its location is that, I've, as I said, on the midline. The easiest way to find it is run your hand down the midline until you find the end of the lumbar vertebra. Then you're gonna find a kind of a squishy area to when you hit the first lump, uh, sacral lump. Halfway between those two is the Bach way. As long as you get yourself in the middle between, on the midline, you're gonna find the Bach way itself. GVT, meaning governing vessel t tip of tail, all right, or governing vessel tail. So we're looking at the end of the bone of the tail itself, not the end of the hair, all right? Used a lot for back issues, stiffness in the back, circulation in the back, overall rear limb issues. When I do this, what I wanna do is turn on the light. I would get on this side of the horse, find the tail, point the light up to the tail itself and hold it here for 10 to 30 seconds. Spleen 10, located on the medial aspect of the patella about too soon or two fingers width above it. Um, it's used for bloodborne toxin issues, female reproductive issues, and immune system. Use it a lot for whenever we have a virus going on as well. So if I just take and put my hand above the patella, it's on the inside, so it'd be like right here on the horse, but on the inside of the horse. So all you gotta do is, and it's on the caudal edge of the femur bone. So if I'm straight across here, but on the inside of the leg. Stomach 36, master point for the stomach. It's used a lot for, of course, stomach issues, digestion, chronic illnesses, spleen issues. Also used very well for the immune system and calms the emotional parts of the horses. Um, it's one we use quite often in uh, lots of issues like um, colic 
and different issues for the stomach. Its location is on the lateral side of the leg or the outside of the leg, one finger off the midline, about four fingers down from the stifle. So stomach 36, one finger off, four fingers down, you'll find a hole right in the center of that muscle. Kidney four, use a lot for edemas, hind limb issues, kidney disorders, and hock disorders. It's located on the medial aspect of the hock itself. So you just put the light right on the medial aspect of the point of the hock. Gallbladder 39, used a lot for, it's located on the back legs on the lateral side. It's used a lot for uh, ligament spasms, uh, tendon pain, um, weakness, numbness, neck issues, stiffness, all issues that would be more for the, the nervous system. And the uh, location of it is that if you find the groove in the hock, and come up about four fingers up, right in the middle of the outside of the leg, you find gallbladder 39. It's right caudal to the tibia bone itself. What is equine colic? Equine colic is a very distressing condition characterized by abdominal pain, often caused by digestive system disturbances, such as gas, spasm, bloating, or impaction. Early symptom recognition is absolutely crucial for prompt and effective intervention.